On that note, the Republican National Convention opens next week in Cleveland, where presidential candidate Donald Trump is expected to get the party's official nomination. ILTV Steve Liebowitz sat down with former Ambassador Yoram Ettinger to hear more about Trump's rather unorthodox campaign to become president. We have uh, Donald Trump representing the anti-establishment versus Hillary Clinton representing continuity and the establishment in, uh, in America. Obviously, the focus is going to be on domestic policy. And once again, I think that Trump is going to leverage the recent polarization uh, on the streets in America between blacks and white, and he's going to highlight the fact that no one can deny that the establishment has failed in uh, uh, dealing with black-white relations in, uh, in America. Hillary Clinton, once again, is going to represent the establishment, which in the last eight years has only further polarized and added fuel to the fire of black-white polarization in America. However, there is a very substantial national security agenda which will confront Donald uh, Trump as well as, Hillary, as, as well as Hillary Clinton. And once again, the question is, will Donald Trump be able to articulate a change? Namely, will he highlight the fact that the U.S. has to rebound as far as resurrection of the defense budget, to rebound as far as resurrecting its posture of deterrence, to rebound as far as its military projection throughout the world. Those issues are not for the sake of the world. It's for the sake of the U.S. because a U.S. with the current eroded posture of deterrence is inviting Muslim terrorism into the mainland of America. The way to deter Muslim terrorism is to recoup U.S. posture of uh, deterrence. The big question is, will Donald Trump face up to the real Muslim threat or will he stick by Obama's denial that there is such a threat? And I think the answer is very clear. Donald Trump has already given it. He does recognize the Muslim terrorist threat to America. On the other hand, Hillary Clinton probably will sustain more or less uh, Obama's view on the matter. When it comes to Israel, my own uh, uh, opinion is that much more important than how do those candidates, Trump and Hillary, feel about Jerusalem, the Palestinian issue, settlements, the Golan Heights, much more important than that is how do they feel about the U.S. defense budget? Will they resurrect the U.S. defense budget to its real scope rather than the dramatically eroded scope under Obama? Do they understand that the U.S. has to combat terrorism in the terrorist-owned trenches? Or would they prefer to wait for the terrorists in the trenches in America? Those are the major, major issues which I believe will affect the stability of the world and therefore also the well-being of the U.S. and its allies such as Israel. Many American Jews are, are, are concerned about Trump because they feel as though he has kind of been winking at the David Dukes of the U.S. So they feel as though he's not, he didn't denounce some of the anti-Semitic supporters that he has and some of the things that they've tweeted and so on to, uh, to people who um, have criticized him, some reporters that are Jewish that have criticized him. On the other hand, he's given over the years to Jewish charities. He has a Jewish son-in-law and a, a Jewish uh, daughter. Uh, are you concerned about the character of Trump as regards to the American Jewry? When it comes to Trump's attitude towards Israel in particular and Jewish people at large, there should not be any concern. I happen to know his two advisors on uh, Israel. I happen to know 
his uh, chief advisor on national uh, security, and they are solid. But most importantly, there is a track record. And the track record of Trump in the last 30 years, probably more than 30 years, has been very, very friendly towards Israel and not inside uh, uh, the room, inside his office, but marching on Fifth uh, Avenue on behalf of uh, Israel.